Major, major disclaimer before we get started. This video has a ridiculously spoilerific Undertale spoiler. And Undertale is a game you absolutely should go into with as little knowledge as possible. Splatoon 1 spoiler warning 2, though that's a bit less of a big deal. No direct plot details on Splatoon 2 either, so you're safe if you haven't played that. But everybody who hasn't played Undertale, last chance, stop watching now! They gone? Okay. Okay, I think they're gone. So, Undertale is a video game. Yeah, actually, that, that, that is it. That is the spoiler. But in more detail, the video game we know as Undertale takes place in a universe which is itself dependent on all the rules of the game. Everything in the game is inherently a part of the universe, including the text boxes and menus. On top of that, if the player reloads their last save, the things they did in between having made that save and the time they reload may be rolled back like in any other game. But both the game and any characters with self-awareness of the nature of their universe will remember. That very act of reloading your last save and turning back the clock is itself an action being performed within the Undertale universe. This applies even when resetting the game to the beginning, and if you end up, for whatever reason, doing anything really, really outlandish, you might just make some totally irreversible changes. To summarize, everything the player ever does in Undertale is canon, no matter what, period. I personally even argue that there is no fourth wall between the Undertale universe and our own, and that the Undertale universe is literally canonically an executable file on your computer. Anyway, if you played the game, you should be aware of all that already. But you might be asking, what in the world does all that have to do with Splatoon? Well, check this out. While the devs clearly weren't going for anything as complex as Undertale canon, the devs have implemented a similar structure for how the Splatoon universe functions. Every mode in both games is something the player character is canonically doing, with explanations for most of the gamey elements. You never actually die when you get splatted, the Inklings have special technology that reforms you. You don't just magically get access to new weapons as you play, the shopkeepers can tell just by looking at you how experienced you are. Every single multiplayer match starts with totally clean turf because the squids use ink that can quickly dissipate. Most multiplayer games just sort of expect you to not think about the fact you've got a dozen of the same person running around making infinite corpses of themselves in the same enclosed area eternally. But Splatoon brought with itself answers to the questions players might ask to create a game universe where every match is actually happening for real. This applies to the story mode too. Your goal in every level is to free a zapfish the Octarian of kidnapped. Of course, once you've saved the Zapfish, there's no reason to go back to where it was before, but there's nothing stopping the player from replaying stages, so what if you do? Well, now you're just sort of stealing an Octarian Zapfish plushie, you jerk. And after beating DJ Octavio, he gets locked in a snow glow. But what happens if you go and try to replay the final battle again? Rather than just repeating the old dialogue as if nothing ever happened, the characters outright tell you that Octavio coincidentally escaped while you were squitting over to the boss level. They go through all the motions of the original battle, but the dialogue has been changed to reflect the characters all being aware they've done this once before. These are all really small details, but they do a lot to build up Splatoon as a living, breathing world, where time is always moving forward. It actually ends up doing a lot to contribute to the hype around Splatfests. They're limited time events, the results are set in stone forever, and they, like everything else, are canon. Later Splatfests in Splatoon 1 referenced the results of those that came before, and the final Splatfest led into the backstory of Splatoon 2. Just like Undertale, everything is canon. But while Undertale uses this fact to examine the implications of a world running under the rules of a video game, Splatoon uses it as a world-building tool. It's a living, breathing world with its own ever-advancing society, never stagnating. Time is always moving in one direction whether you're there or not. Every battle is a new experience. There's no going back to the past, but you'll always have the future and the next Splatfest to look forward to. And what do you guys think? Did you like Splatoon's everything is canon approach? Did you even notice? And what are some other games that take an interesting approach to the concept? Let me know in the comments, and especially let me know how much this video sucks. Arigato gozaimasu desu for watching, and get out of my house.